Hi everyone, I'm Maria McLachlan and this video is intended as a short explanation of why I have decided to go on the offensive against some people, a few of whom I once considered to be personal friends, or at least on friendly terms with in real life, and many more of whom I never met in real life, but whom I respected and admired because I was under the misapprehension that they were sceptics who were committed to challenging lies and promoting the truth as I am myself. Okay, a word about spelling. I know a lot of Brits hate American spellings. When I use the word sceptical in the usual colloquial sense, as in, I'm very sceptical of your story, if I'm writing, I would spell it with a C as is usual in British English. But when I talk about the outlook on life, sometimes known as scientific scepticism or rational scepticism, I like to spell it with a K because that is the original Greek spelling. There is no letter C in Greek. What is scepticism as a world view? There are loads of definitions all over the web, and I've yet to see one that I disagree with, and there are some good YouTube videos too. I would call scepticism a way of thinking that means you don't just accept everything you're told. You don't accept extraordinary claims without question. You scrutinise the claim, you consider how plausible it is, and if it is remotely plausible, you ask, what is the evidence for it? Imagine someone tells you that they have magic healing crystals. How do you react? Do you believe them? Or do you ask questions? Where did you get these? What do they cure? How do they work? Even if you've never thought about it before, I'm sure you will understand that as far as evidence for medical treatment is concerned, not all evidence is considered equally useful. There is a hierarchy, often expressed graphically in pyramid form, with the highest standard, the best form of evidence at the top. Claims about so-called alternative therapies are scientifically testable. They have been tested and they don't stand up to scrutiny. There's an old joke that bears repeating. What do you call alternative medicine that works? Answer, medicine. The same goes for horoscopes, ghosts, UFOs, reincarnations, various conspiracy theories and being born in the wrong body. I am so sorry if you believe any of those things, but the evidence is against them. Some of you know that I spent a number of years campaigning against alternative treatments and anti-vaccine propaganda. I had a blog called Skepticat UK, in fact I still have it, I just don't update it anymore, and on that blog I once wrote, what the hell is going on with sceptics? I've never been one to suffer fools gladly, and one of the most dismaying things I've discovered recently about those who, apparently in all seriousness, identify as sceptics, is how many of them are fools. I say this because, contrary to what sceptics are supposed to do, they are embracing without question an ideology that any fool should be able to see is untenable and destructive. Why can't these sceptic fools see this? Is it because they are simply not looking? Because they are letting their hearts rule their heads? Because they are frightened of being publicly denounced as bigots? I get all that, but why the attempts to silence those they disagree with rather than challenging us on the basis of reason and evidence as sceptics are supposed to? Why the unfriending blocking and smearing on social media. Why the sheer nastiness some of them are directing at those of us who see the things that they appear to be oblivious to or would rather not acknowledge. Is it, perchance, because those who behave like this know somewhere deep down that they are on a hiding to nothing and it's an argument they can't win? Repeating trans women are women like a parrot on speed isn't an argument, by the way. 
Is it because they know that the core tenets of transgender ideology are metaphysical rather than scientific? Block, smear, insult, whatever it takes to get us to shut up, right? In your dreams. Women and our male allies, including many trans-identifying people, are fighting back and we will win because the gender ideology that has gained such a strong foothold without most of the population even realising it is regressive and steeped in sexism. The fundamental disagreement, so far as I can see, is about whether men who identify as women are actually women have in fact been women and girls all along and vice versa for women who identify as men. The scare quotes are in place because it's not clear what identifying as even means. Being a woman or a man is not an identity or a personality type and those who have been born male do not know what growing up in a female body and being treated as a girl or woman is like and vice versa. This disagreement also gives rise to a host of others concerning rights to sex segregated spaces and pastimes. It has given rise to pathological discourse and a toxic environment on social media and in real life with trans activists focusing a vast amount of effort into trying to stop women meeting to discuss sex and gender and how proposed changes to relevant legislation may impact our lives. These trans activists are unconcerned at just how sexist and discriminatory they are being. I have heard several veteran feminist campaigners say they've experienced nothing like it and I agree. So I wrote those words four years ago. I still stand by them. No skeptic responded with anything resembling a counter argument and how dismaying it is to see that although thousands more people have woken up to the ideology, to the cultish behavior and flawed arguments of those who promote it, and we are starting to see real progress in pushing back, so many so-called skeptics are either keeping quiet over what should be an absolute gift to anyone truly interested in sceptical inquiry, or they are effectively abandoning scepticism without admitting it and embracing the ideology. That includes people who are professional scientists. I know I've said this before, but scientists are not more rational, nor do they have superior thinking skills to anyone else. They are every bit as gullible and as prone to dishonesty as anyone else might be. For years, I've been toying with the idea of having a page on my website called Skeptics Say the Darndest Things. I'll explain that title another time. That's still an ambition, actually. But in the meantime, I've started a new playlist of that name. And the only thing I've put on it so far is the video I did reacting to Rebecca Watson and PZ Myers both of whom are high profile members of the US skeptic community, such as it still exists. I will soon be adding another video in which I react to Rebecca Watson, misleading her audience on so-called gender affirmative treatments. After that, I have no firm plans, but hope to make the occasional video exposing the lack of skepticism of so-called skeptics as a way of channeling my frustration. That's all. Thanks for watching.